The Hustle Share Podcast is brought to you by AWS, the world's most comprehensive and broadly adopted cloud platform. Use AWS now to lower your business costs, become more agile, and for faster innovation. Apply now to get $1,000 free credits at hustleshare.com slash AWS. Also by Tagcash. Spend, play, earn, and build a mobile wallet super app for your startup. Go now to hustleshare.com slash tagcash to apply and get your startup's mobile wallet. And Caliber. It's the easiest, most convenient way to get hired. Caliber Tailor fits the perfect job for you based on your unique skills. Hire the best people for your company at www.caliber.com and use the promo code HUSTLESHARE. Caliber, where jobs find you. Welcome to the first ever Hustle Share Playbook. My name is Ronster and I'm your host. And this playbook is powered by AWS, the world's most comprehensive and broadly adopted cloud platform. We are a proud affiliate of the Podcast Network Asia, but before we begin, and just like any other episode, this podcast contains a lot of not safe for work language, so make sure there are no kids when you're listening to this. Because today you're probably wondering what this new sound and what this new podcast format is all about. And let me explain, because the Hustle Share Playbook was made to further invest on what we've started in this podcast. This podcast was made to listen to other hustlers so you can improve in your hustle. The normal format still stays the same, but we're introducing this brand new concept which is called the playbook. And it's quite simple what it is. It's a cheat sheet of key startup things or key things about certain hustles that you can apply into your hustles. And our approach is very strategic and tactical in this format of the show. And today we're going to be having someone very familiar because we've had him in the very first episode and his name is Magellan Petalino and today we're going to be discussing the step-by-step process of how to fundraise here in the Philippines. So just a background on what we're going to be discussing, we're going to be talking about the different types of fundraisings you can do for your startup and also we will be discussing what the proper timing and everything in between that you need to know on each type of fundraising mechanism that you will be encountering in this playbook. So if you're ready to learn how to raise funds in the Philippines, let's begin this playbook right now. Welcome to the very first Hustle Share playbook. And we have someone here today that we kind of did. This is like deja vu. This is literally almost a year ago when we started doing this, right? And um, for the very first episode of Hustle Share, we had the same guy. So, you know, and there's if there's there's the same. If it ain't broke, don't fuck with it. Okay? Numero uno. <laughs> exactly. And numero uno, we're going with the, with our amigo from the Spanish Conquistadores, which is my man, Magellan Petalino. Welcome back. What's up, Ron? Hey, Ooh, hey. We got sound effects now, bro. I love it. Thank you. I love this like full set. Yep, yep. I told you, right? I mean, the last last time we did, just to provide just a little bit of context when we, start, we started doing this. <laughs> I still remember it. We look like idiots because we were using, I was. I borrowed your condenser mic. Yeah, you, have, had you my, brought your own mic. <laughs> We went to uh, to my office <laughs> on a Saturday. On a Saturday, oh plugged God. everything in in my like table, <laughs> and then that's it. And we that's kept, our like, set. Right, I was plugged it onto the laptop. Now we have a whole fucking studio. You have, you have a screen here, man. Yeah. I can see. This is awesome. <laughs> this is like a real podcast studio. It is. It is. And again, shout out to Podcast Network Asia for providing this, which is also mine, by the way. So again, I'm I'm, I'm tooting my own. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Mads, since the last time we did cut, catch up, just to provide uh, context for those listeners who are listening, what the fuck is this Hassel Share playbook, Ron? What is this? So it's very simple. Let, let me just di- di- digress here a little bit. Hustle Share, the normal format, is you talk about the journey, right? It, it's meant to inspire you. But as the bitch that says it on the intro, it's to show not our differences, but that our hustles are very much alike. And with that, you need to be able to apply the hustle of other people to your start, to your startup or to your hustle as well. And that's what the playbook is. 
we're going to be talking about strategic step-by-step Love processes. It. Love it. Exciting. Correct. Uh, about the things that 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 will improve your hustle in whatever the Ito fuck. Na yon. Ito na Correct. Yon. We we this is your fucking cheat cheat sheet. That's why it's called the playbook. Okay. Max, what's our first play for this one? Okay. How about we talk about fundraising? Oh shit, I don't know. Okay, we don't know anybody who's more qualified to talk about fundraising. You probably are the most. Uh, you're one of you're out there. We're in the Mount Rushmore of how much you raised here in the Philippines. And again, props to you because this is how you're technically your second or your first tech startup, correct? Yeah, so, correct. So again, if you want to do the deep dive of what Magellan Petalino does, go to his OG episode, the first, very first episode of Hustle Share. You'll see the difference also of how, how different we sound now. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. so fucked up. It, but it's good. It's still the best episode of Hustle Share. I still Share. listen to that. Huh? Sometimes when I, sometimes I just listen to that first podcast with yeah. I get inspired. Ah, oh, there you go. It's Hearing your voice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about that, but okay, let's let's do this. So let's talk about fundraising. The format is very different. Um, we're gonna literally jot down notes now before we start. Uh, if you do say jargon, if there's something unclear about what we did, mm-hmm. we have a website that will be a reference point. It's gonna be on hustleshare. So awesome. if you missed out, if you're driving right now, don't fucking pull over and start fucking typing shit out. <laughs> <laughs> don't die. Good. Right? Not good. Go to hustleshare.com after everything's going to be there. There you right? go. So Max, fundraising, this is a key thing about the startups. And how, how, what, how do you properly fundraise? What, what are the first things that one needs to do? Is there someone you need to approach or do you have, what, what's, your, what's your MO? Okay, so... I'll go straight to this taboo. You know, okay. There's a taboo that if you're a tech company, you go out and immediately raise money for your idea. Correct. And for quite a while, I remember back in 2016, you started ahead of me. Yeah. Uh, but, but we it, died. No. Yeah. But I mean, we went through the same experience right. wherein you, we like came up with a 10 slide pitch deck, mm. went around pitching in every um, event Whoever and is, competition right. mm-hmm. uh, that we can go to and uh, mm-hmm. join in and expect people to just put in money uh, in our idea. That's in Silicon Valley. The, the, no, no, no. That even <laughs> just this is the series. That's what happens in the series. That's not in real life, especially in the Philippines. That is right. right. That Joseph. is right. <laughs> That's true, Joseph. Yeah. So, um, that doesn't work out that way. Yeah, fundraising doesn't work out that way. Um, I remember w- if there's one thing that you have to consider first before you even fundraise. Yeah, it's to identify exactly how much you need, and knowing uh, exactly where you're gonna use that money for. Okay, now if you're talking about this, because most people also pluck this out out of thin air. Oh yeah, oh, right. Yeah. And I've it's seen like, that. oh, it's like yeah, I'll, uh, I've seen this in the final pitch a lot. <laughs> I'm not throwing shade. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, yeah, we have a valuation of two million dollars, and I'm asking for three hundred thousand. Like, dude, where the fuck did you get that? Right? That's right. So, what's the proper science? How do you prepare it for a proper PNL? Because that's what it's gonna take, correct? Yeah. How do you properly project? Your, your revenues and your valuations to, to defend your ask. There you go. So um, the first question um, that I mentioned was like knowing or asking yourself, what do you need the money for? Um, mm. So to identify that, um, a lot of young companies and entrepreneurs today, they skip that step of coming up with a proper business plan. Yeah. Okay. It's hard to pitch something when you don't know your numbers. So at least when you have a business plan, it becomes like a guide. Right? You're guided now. Okay, this is when you actually run numbers in your financial model. Yep. And a lot of investors, they know. They have that understanding that when you first approach them and mm-hmm. you're just starting a company, mm-hmm. your projections are dependent on how you execute 
Of course. And they also know, so that's number one, they know that it's dependent on how good you are at execution. Okay. And number two, um, the numbers you show, they know that those are projections mm-hmm. and that they are still not uh, backed by actual performance. Correct. So that's clear to their head. Mm-hmm. So the thing is, when they look at those numbers, they want to see how you will bring the company right. using their money correct, to a point in your projection that will get you to sustainability. So a certain milestone. A certain milestone. That milestone could be something like a big contract. Right. Uh, or let's, so let's say a big co- client contract or let's say a big partnership or let's say a regulation that needs to happen. Mm-hmm. And because based on those dependencies, it will be shown in your business plan and your financial right. model that using the money that they're going to give, mm-hmm. you're going to exert majority of your effort to close those specific milestones. Correct. Basically, you set whatever it is that you're going to be measured on yep. dependent on what you're going to be, what you showed, which is technically you're asking, okay, from if you give me X amount, my runway will be to from point A to point, say, G, for example. That's right. And this is what I'm going to do. Exactly. Right? Now, in reality, that, doesn't, that rarely ever happens at point A to point G, all the stars align and you hit it. That That's is why yeah. also, I guess from, from my point in, you have to put in a buffer. Exactly. exactly. To make mistakes. <laughs> that is true. And whatnot. Okay, so Mags, let's just track back a little bit. To prepare for fundraising here in the Philippine setting, especially also if you can chime in examples of how you did it, what were the first things that you did? So you didn't, you, were, you, you talked about the taboo. So don't do that because yeah, there's not enough people that can write good enough checks here. Also, if they do, you're probably going to get sharked out. Exactly. When we say sharked out, you're going to get too much, give up too, too much equity for too little. That right? is correct. So how were you able to do that in your, in your end where, because you did the FI route. That is Which true. was amazing again, shout out to, mm-hmm. to, to the guys, the boys of F- FI yeah. and whatnot. But again, FI provides that structure. How did you do it? What were the first things you did? So, um, there's still a couple of things that, because uh, programs like Founder Institute, they can give you a good framework. Of I love those guys. Uh, yep. I learned a lot from shout out to them. Uh, the guys of uh, Founder Institute. But there are also certain things that you will only learn when you're on the ground. Right? Right. Once you're actually out there dealing with uh, Filipino invest, uh, Filipino or Philippine-based investors, okay. that's when you actually know what really takes them and what really motivates them to put money in okay. your idea. Okay. So one thing that you should realize is that Filipinos have their own mentality. Mm-hmm especially in investing. Mm -hmm. And a vast majority of Filipino investors are still very risk averse. Yes. Yeah. That's why they put it in the bands, in the the bank stock market. That's very risky for them even. Exactly. Right. So right there and then, there's already a mismatch. eh, Mm. Um, When you, usually when you raise funds for your startup that doesn't have like, um, traction yet or is yeah. still in the MVP stage okay. there's a lot of risk right now in the Philippines there's a lot of money there's a lot of liquidity uh, which is actually the problem of banks today there's, they just have too much money diba? right that's why but, they, they have, they, they, now it's in Akudin <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is the risk appetite is not there correct you're sitting on that fucking that treasure trove exactly of, of, of pile of cash so La now casa de papel is yeah. es la mismo <laughs> yeah, es, so there, there's right. just so much there's a lot of cash right uh let's that's one fact about the philippines today mm-hmm. so the first thing that you have to set in your head is that when you start approaching the, these investors, 
you need to know all those risks that your business uh, are gonna face, mm. and you have to present ha- um, solutions and how you're gonna execute to make sure that those risks are mitigated. Yeah. Because good investors, they would immediately identify the risks that they are gonna go through when they give that money. Got it. So if you can answer uh, the Filipino investors or sure. Philippine-based investors sharply, very yeah. sharply, uh, on how you're going to mitigate those risks, then they will be more comfortable to give you money. Okay. Now, there's one thing that I'm very curious of. Timing. Mm-hmm. When do you properly raise funds? Because there's always this taboo because especially in the Philippines, again, again, the percent, take it from the guy who's raised billions of pesos. There's a ton of fucking money in this country. So whenever somebody says, you know, there's not enough cash, this guy just fucking did it. Just nobody's r- compelling enough to pr- provide those guys a, 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 a reason to shell that check. Correct? Now, let's talk about that. Timing. When is the first? Uh, where is the best time to properly raise? Because people always say, "Yeah, bootstrap your way, blah blah blah." But, dude, if you're a startup, you need lifeblood for exponential growth. Bootstrapping is not gonna cut it, and a startup by default is uh, is a company that's deemed for exponential growth. A hockey fucking stick. That is true. So when do you properly do that? Do you need to have problem solution fit? What are the key metrics that they need to at least have on their deck or in their treasure and in their, their artillery before they start pitching? For me, it's market product fit. Um, yeah. So after that MVP, mm-hmm. uh, so you create your MVP, right? And you've proven that there's a mark, uh, like a customer base that Got it. could uh, that is gonna use your solution. Mm-hmm. Why after market product fit? Mm-hmm. One thing that you should avoid yeah. as an entrepreneur right. is to scale something that's broken. When Ouch. I say broken... You hurt me with that. That's what I did with Party Foul. <laughs> we, we make all, no, it's okay. We all make that mistake. We all make that mistake. Correct, correct, correct. correct. Yeah? So sometimes because we get overly excited. Like... Um, there are tendencies wherein we get overly excited. We got that first customer, right. second customer, third customer. Right. And you drink and, our own Kool-Aid. And you drink your own Kool-Aid. You like tap your your own back and, and like, tell yourself, great job, Magellan. <laughs> You're so fucking, You're uh, fucking can, awesome. Can I swear? Can yeah, I swear? of course. You're so Let's, fucking awesome, Magellan. Right. Let's rock. Let's start raising funds from people okay. and make this fucking shit big. Right. Bro. Mm-hmm. But that's usually when things start crumbling down. Because yeah. so when you scale something that's broken, that's like an um it's like uh building a uh a skyscraper okay. but your foundation is not strong. Right. So the tendency is konting hangin lang bagsak. Wee! Boom. Right. So uh the perfect example would be we work. Mm-hmm. Those guys, uh, nasasayangan ako because uh, the guys behind We Work, they had the charm, which I Newman, have to say, yeah. yeah. And Newman has like the charm. Yeah. And in like getting people to believe in you, diba? Uh, for people, even had the terminologies, even like yeah. the, the we, we culture. Like, exactly. Right. And, okay. And, in reality, when you raise funds, you're not really getting people to put money in your company eh, because they like what you're doing. It's you. It's you. The so, founder. It's very founder-driven, especially in earlier rounds. So again, exactly. just to provide context, sorry, if I cut you, cut you there. There's multiple rounds. The typical life cycle mm-hmm. of, of funding rounds that happen in a startup that's deemed for exponential growth yeah. There's an angel round. Yeah. The friends, phones, and families. These That's are right. the ones that at least get you started to get That's the ball right. rolling. The second one is the seed. Mostly, this is where the first institutional uh, 
check comes in if you exactly. get, you're lucky to get one That's higher great. check size and then there's a bridge how many bridges whatever the fuck you want to call it some people yeah. call it uh convertible notes or usually bridge <laughs> happens when <laughs> things don't go as planned eh? or you're running out of runway correct right? so actually if you have a solid plan tendency is you no, won't you have don't need bridge a bridge answer. exactly right. but everything hey, there's like no shame out. in not br- doing a bridge by and the way it's fine huh? there's Super no shame in up. that yeah just don't run out of cash run out of cash exactly. that's the game if exactly. you're ever gonna play the fundraising game don't just like monopoly guys remember this don't you you still part of the game until you have cash exactly. so if whether it's gonna come from a customer or from investors, don't fuck that cash up because that's finite. Exactly. And of course, lastly, the series A, B, C, D, or whatever. And then to an exit. That's I don't right. know how many series you've done it, but again, <laughs> there's no <laughs> one more qualified to, to talk about this than you. Okay, um, so timing, product, market fit. Yeah, for me. I'll tell you why you shouldn't raise money from people outside, uh, let's say your inner circle, okay. before market product fit. Um, there's that, there's reputational risk, kasi, di ba? Correct. I mean, if you're gonna make a mistake, it's better to make a mistake, uh, risking your own money, your own resources, or at least people who would like not uh, hate you for losing their money. Like, let's Correct. say family. Mm. If you're if if you have a good relationship right. relationship with your family mm. or friends, if you have a good relationship with your friends, di ba? got it. Because uh, that. Part of the business cycle is the most risky. Like yep. things could really like life or death. Anytime. It's literally. life or death, literally. Yeah. So, uh, given that really high percentage of failure, and let's say if you raised money from an angel during that period, which is mm. which you can do, diba? Right? You can yeah, do that. There's no shame. I've I've done that in yeah, Podcast yeah. Network Asia. The reason why we're able to make enough strides, yeah, uh, as well. It's because I was able to finally raise it. There but you again, you said one big caveat there. Exactly. It's reputation. Reputation. The only reason why I'm able to raise so fast now because I've fucked up in my first one, which there is Party File, has yeah. exited in Chatbot. Exactly. And I kind of already built a really good MVP of exactly. podcasting here in the Philippines, establishing that market. Exactly. Then I started asking money. I didn't ask for money like, hey, I want to do a podcast. Exactly. Nah. Exactly. Right. I agree with you. And there's a difference there, Ron. Like I said, you're an experienced serial entrepreneur yeah if it's your first time to go through entrepreneurship one thing you should know is that when you fail and someone invested in you and obviously that person will lose money if you approach that person in the wrong manner like you just stop talking to him ah that's gonna that's gonna be bad because a lot of these people talk diba? Yeah. So it goes around. It goes around, diba. Right? So the way you handle the people who believed in you, whether in good times or bad times, uh, defines it. defines you as a person and sure. as an entrepreneur. And that's also again we can talk about that in a different playbook. Yeah, how to bounce back from failure, which exactly. I'm an expert on. I fucking fuck this up, <laughs> right? But. Um, you're, that's right. And that's yeah. why I want to, at least on my part, I actually went back and I apologized. I fucking cried my ass out in front of Minette because she, she was my mm-hmm. very first investor. Now, here's one thing before we take our first break or our only break. This is just a playbook. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like taking breaks here. Um, you know, you, 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 there are bridges that you don't want to burn. That is correct. However, there are inevitable ones that unfortunately you have to burn so you have yeah. to just stick with those yeah and and whatnot because you exactly. know you do, at the end of the day you don't want to be cool with everyone and then lose your own soul in the process amen okay now let's take our first break and then we come back let's talk about more how to fundraise in the philippines there you go but let's talk about that more after the break the break hey guys it's a brand new season and i want to share you another brand new lesson that i learned through my 10 years of hustling as a startup founder. See, one of the biggest mistakes that early stage startup founders usually do is creating a product that they haven't validated and allocating resources based on hypotheses that they haven't tested. And don't worry because I've made this mistake several times as well. I remember 
back in my first startup called Party File, I invested all my life savings to developing a website with the developer that I hired without validating anything. And guess what happened? Yep, it did not work. And now I was stuck with a website that nobody wanted to use and I did not have the resources to edit the site and add more features that people actually care about. Now, luckily, there are a lot of sites now and resources that you can use to not make the same mistake. And one of them is Tag Cash. The beauty about Tag Cash is that it's already an existing platform that you can just replicate, especially if you have a fintech play and you want to build on the blockchain. So if you need features like deposit, spending, charging, transferring, disbursements, and all the way to withdrawing money, you can use Tag Cash to now validate your ideas very fast. Now the cool thing is Tag Cash is actually looking for startups to support, especially those ones that support a certain community. One perfect example is Society8, wherein before they used to write checks for all their merchants that they support, but now they do that automatically within the Tag Cash app that they have. And also they were now able to scale to over two dozen locations. So if you're interested to start using Tag Cash in your startup, just go to www.hustleshare.com slash Tag Cash and fill up the form and tell us how are you gonna use Tag Cash to build your own super app for your startup. So again, that's hustleshare.com slash Tag Cash. And you'll never know, you just might get your funding there too. Hey hustlers, let's take a quick break to discuss one very valuable and expensive lessons that I have learned through my journey as a startup founder. You see, back when I first built my nightlife app called Party File, I chose to be frugal at the wrong things and allocated my very limited resources on things like dev work without taking into consideration how users will use our app when we launch. And I was so enamored with the idea that once I got the app out in the app store and people started downloading it, I won't have any problems anymore. And I was so wrong because it's already hard and super expensive to acquire users to use your MVP. And it's even more expensive to keep users in using an app that crashes because you chose to use the wrong service. Now, luckily, there's a solution to this problem that will not break the bank, which is AWS. The beauty about AWS is it's not just the most comprehensive and broadly accepted cloud platform where the world's most successful companies use it. It is also very startup friendly. Why? Because it has the most functionalities. So whatever you're trying to build in whatever architecture or language, it's certain that it's going to work. They are also flexible where you only pay for what you use so that your servers can also expand when you have that spike of users and your app or website will not crash. Now we're not going to leave you salivating here without hooking you up to try what we're talking about yourself. We're hooking you up with 1000 USD worth of free credits, that's 50,000 pesos from AWS that you can use to build your tech there now. All you have to do is apply at hustleshare.com slash AWS and fill up the form to apply to get your $1,000 free credits now. Okie dokes, let's get back to the show. And we're back from the break. We're still with our very first guest from Hustle Share Podcast. And now in the playbook too, this is so interesting, with Mr. Magellan Petalino. Wait, sarap naman ng break dito. May buffet. Oh, there you go. Love Bu- it. Buffet on wires. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, this is, as we're recording, this is really late at night again. Thank you very much for, <laughs> for working over Magellan and whatnot. Um, okay, so Max, before the break, you mentioned that, okay, th- these are the things that you need to already know. So we get timing and all these things, the pitfalls that we that we, we should look for and whatnot. What else should we do? You, you want to talk about structure. What do you mean hmm. by structure? Well, there's many structures you can use when you fundraise. So it okay. depends on um, the current state of your business and it depends okay. on uh, where you're going to use it for. Okay. Uh, there's three ways to go about this. Okay. At least there's three ways that I've used in the past Okay. Uh, that we're Proven, okay? Proven. He's not just throwing out random fucking theories here. Yeah. Um, 
I've had experience raising money through equity. Okay, so when uh, you say equity, what do you mean? When you say equity, that's when you give shares uh, in your company to interested investors uh, who essentially become shareholders in your company. Correct. Now, if they're a shareholder, again, just a little caveat, you're giving them a piece of your company. So they own it and they are now entitled to have a voice and no matter what it is. I have to say, among all the ways to fundraise, this is the most expensive. Yes, because you're selling a piece of your company to it. Yeah. Right. Equity is the most expensive. And this is a marriage. Oh, yeah. That's right. A fucking marriage. So when I say a marriage, yo, you can, in, in a normal setting outside the Philippines, obviously, you can divorce a wife or a husband. <laughs> <laughs> in a equity shit, unless you have people to fucking buy it out at a very yeah. nice price. I was about to say, unless you have, unless you have money to buy them out. Which nine <laughs> times out of ten, no, ten times out of ten, startup founders don't. You're pretty much fucked. Now, if you chose the wrong investor for equity, you can have a very, very mm. fucked up board. Oh yeah. Regardless mm. if they're a minority or what. That is correct. Okay, so that's the next. What's the next one? Next one. Debt, loan. Yeah. Utang. Utang. Okay. So uh, you can you you can borrow money uh, okay. instead of giving equity uh, to also uh, for your fundraise. Uh, again, mm. it depends on where you're gonna use it for. We're gonna delve into that later. Okay, let's do that. And the last one is uh, a mix. You call it mezzanine. This is when mm. you mix, let's say, equity and uh, a loan. Like so a you convertible may have, note. There you go. You may okay. have heard of a convertible note. A convertible note is essentially a liability. It's a loan, diba? It's right. a financing. Wherein, uh, if you're not able to pay back that loan, the lender gets shares from your company. So it's like it's almost like using your shares in your business as collateral. Yes, double-edged sword. Yep. I, in, a, in a perfect world, technically, you're supposed to not default and pay that exactly. person back so exactly. that you still hold equity. That's right. Majority of the time, people just dangle that and they get diluted with a certain valuation cap. The That's valuation correct. valuation cap technically is that with a discount, there's always a discount. There's always They'd, a discount. Right? Usually 20%. They convert at a lower valuation that you're in. That means you give more down the road. And if you have too many notes, you're going to get fucked and be diluted. Now, we'll also talk about uh, that and in terms of why equity is so important and what power it gives you. But let's actually do that now. So the first, let's talk about the first one, equity. Yeah. So when you do an equity round, which is the most common one, at least in startups, yeah. what do you do and, and how do you approach this? When you do um, fundraising through equity, uh, again, you're giving shares to people, right? Mm-hmm. In the beginning, um, no. One problem I saw in the Philippines okay. among startups is that the first person who gives money, uh, you just take it, Nima. Right? Yeah. Uh, but again, you mentioned about marriage. If there's one thing I've learned over the years, um, when you give out equity, try to choose those investors very, very wisely. Yeah. Like you have to really map out their strategic value. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, let's say if you bring in this per- this person or this like uh, VC, yeah. What are those like, uh, va- those like uh, values that they can bring into the table? Uh, aside they, from cash, aside from cash, yes. Like, can they bring you commercial partnerships? Can mm. they give you access to a market that you wanna tap? Correct. Can they give you? Uh, let's say you need additional capital call. Can they actually do top ups? S- top ups, right? Diba? Because ang nangyayari, um, I've seen a lot of start- startups wherein they took the money of the first person who was willing to give to write them a check, and when things don't didn't go uh, as planned, okay, uh, and obviously they're stuck with that shareholder. If that shareholder does not have the capacity to uh, give the founders what they need, okay. like. Uh, in a commercial Whatever, way right. or mm-hmm. in using money, then mm-hmm. uh, wala na. you'll just both be stuck. Correct. So always be 
uh, mindful. I think that's the right term. Mindfulness okay. on the strategic value that the investor you're bringing in uh, gives you. Okay. And gives the company. Now you talk about again structure prior to delving in. I want to talk about a couple more things. That, okay. That's basically need to be in the, your back pocket. Yeah. First one, there's two things you need actually like in your in your Dora's backpack. You have to have this. Number one, you have to have a cap table. So when you have a cap table, technically it's your percentage. It's your, think of about ownership. it like a pie. That's right. Right? How much are you willing to give at a certain stage exactly because that's what future investors would ask for exactly. who is who is holding equity in your thing now if you give away too much too early it's going to be hard for you to raise the next round because there's not enough space for them to come in already unless that person has strategic value it goes back to unless strategic value. correct correct like for example mm. if early on uh let's say Let's just say we're partners we're and we partners. do a 60 40. You're 60, I'm 40. Oh, eh, we're, we both bring value naman to the organization. Okay. That's fine, diba? Okay. Or let's say, let's say early on, it's the two of us Ron, me, Magellan, and then a bank. And then let's say we're doing a fintech. Mm. Even if that bank takes in a significant. Uh, like what? Like how? Let's say 20%, 30%. Mm, that's all right. That's all right. Because uh, when investors start looking at it, ah, okay, they gave 20% to this bank. I see the value. It depends on it your makes business. Makes a lot of sense. Parang gana. No, how, here's one thing, guys. There's a magic number of how much you shouldn't give out at an early stage. And take now, again, it's going to be in, your, in the show notes. It's 67%. Why 67%? Because in any startup, you need to have super majority, majority to make whatever fucking decisions decision you, you want. need to make. Exactly. If you give out super super majority, what happens, Majela? Well, you're essentially giving the direction to that super majority shareholder. Anything you want to do uh, becomes like a my mi- you become a minor voice in your company. Correct. So, or you need an additional seat to exactly. achieve that, which again it becomes a game of politics. And you don't want politics early on in your business. Fuck diba? no. It, ang pinaka mahirap jan if you give super majority to a share uh, an investor who doesn't under understand your values. You work and, for them, and you who doesn't understand mm. your mission and vision. Patay ka na. Yeah, correct. Y- you're gonna be you're gonna be like more of an employee to that. Or group. in better terms, you're their bitch. I was avoiding that, but yeah. <laughs> we fucking real here though, bro. So that's what it is. So that's why you don't give out anything more than that, especially mm-hmm. in the early stage. Mm-hmm. As much as possible, if you, you can keep up to Series A and you haven't given away 67 or 34% of mm. your company yet, you're still okay. That's right. Right? Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you know, you have to plan that out. And that super majority is so, so, so important when you make to need to make uh, big decisions. Now, there's one thing too, Max. Term sheet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. this is the the, the 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 deadly shit, right? Yeah. You know, ah, we talk about your handshake. Oh, I trust you anyway. Okay, give me your money without any paperwork. That's right. Oh, uh, what is a term sheet and the next iteration is subscription agreement? What are those things? Well, uh, obviously, diba, uh, when you come up with a deal, okay, there should be an offer. And Our usually, terms. it's in the term sheet, right? Uh, that's where the I've seen cases wherein it's the investor who, who makes give, it. who gives the term sheet. But right. for me, uh, for me, I think uh, if you're gonna offer something, uh, you should, and if you want leverage ov- on the negotiation table, of course. You dictate it. You dictate it. You Correct. set out the, diba, the benchmark. It's your startup. Yeah, exactly. Set right. out the benchmark. It already sets the wrong precedent if you're coming in and you let them bitch you out. Exactly. Right. I mean, yeah. no no disrespect. So, but you need to do your homework. Exactly. Right. And again, another thing, I learned this from Minette Navarrete. Even it, here's one thing, guys. Term sheets are non-binding. Yeah. They can sign that, but they can still back out. Yep. The, the deal only really closes is when you... Number one, get the check. Number two is if you have a subscription agreement. So lawyer it out. <laughs> Make sure that this is properly executed because this is where it will all loans down to. Especially, there's this one part, which again, we'll do another playbook on this. 
in between signing term sheet and writing the check, there's this fucking purgatory of a fucking time, which is the most nerve-wracking thing. Due diligence. Yeah. <laughs> DD. Double D. Right? <laughs> Sexy. Said double D. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's Kasi, fucking... Yeah. Well, what you iron out in the term sheet is the commercials. Yeah. Like how many percent? The how deals much cash? Game, right. Diba? That's it. But investors will not give you money until... After they verified, whatever verified you said. everything that you've presented them, and that happens during due diligence. Which again, we'll do that. Uh, well, how to maneuver or how to properly get out alive? <laughs> because if you said too much bullshit, by the way, and and then they do a DD. Oh crap! Oh god! And some the good investors can sniff that a mile away. Yeah. Like, ah, shit. Diba? Uh, you yeah. can only do so much with BS. Diba? Right. At the end of the day, uh, numbers up. don't lie. Right. Numbers you don't gotta lie. You got to walk the walk, talk the talk. Exactly. Okay. So after all of this, so equity, that's good. That's what it is. Um, the next one is debt. There's a negative stigma on debt here in the Philippines. Because that's yeah, right. I don't want to get utang. You know, the collateral, yeah. they'll get my bahay and lupa. Exactly. Whatever. Well, how do you properly raise a debt and when do you properly do this? And, and is there a risk appetite to this to end? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, the normal way non-startups do do this is either you go to a bank, but if you don't qualify, that's why you go to Akudin. That's it. <laughs> because, you know, it's hard to get approved by banks. But how, how do you properly do that? Okay, so when you do that... Uh, the problem kasi with a lot of businesses, the, the reason for the negative stigma is we have, for some reason in the Philippines, and I'm saying this because from experience, I've seen how people borrow money in other markets like Myanmar. We have mm -hmm, a, mm -hmm. a joint venture in Myanmar. Yeah. For some reason in the Philippines, I think the negative stigma comes from the fact that we don't really have a good paying culture here. Eh? Yeah. They're all fucking... Uh, People they default all the time. We're not like the Lannisters. Yes. Diba? They don't pay our debt. I think Filipinos <laughs> don't pay their debts. Diba? And they make it so hard yeah. for the debt fucking to the people that borrowed and then they're even mad. Oh, yeah. And yeah, by yeah, default, yeah. that's why the five sixes are also predatory. By default, I can't blame them because they get fucked all the time. We don't why, have that integrity. Why do you... Why do you have so many cre quote unquote creative collection practices in the Philippines? Mm -hmm. Because it's just so fucking hard to collect. True. Diba? Um, and I think this is something that ano, eh, starts early on. Even when you're young. Diba? It's embedded um, in our culture. Parang, uh, I remember when I was in high school, may yung parang, Uy, arbor na lang. Ah, parang, Uy, payram naman 20 pesos. Bili lang ako ng well, that's a thank buko, you buko juice. Oh, God. Tapos after a while, nakalimutan na. Mm. 20 pesos. Yeah. So, anyway, I think that's the reason for the negative stigma right. behind loans. Kasi when you don't pay, obviously, people will chase you. Correct. So, that's why people are afraid to borrow money. Correct. Now, let's get back to... Uh, from a business setting in, from, in deal. Yeah. In, uh, let's go back to the business setting and the benefits of actually using debt. Okay. Um, you normally... Um, when you borrow debt, uh, you have uh, sorry. When you borrow money, okay, you have to think. You only borrow money. Uh, when you borrow money, it's like you're taking a future earning and liquidating it today, right? So you can already use Execute it, it right. uh, for let's say a project or something mm -hmm. else. So you never borrow money when you know you don't have a cap the capacity to pay it. After a few months, you correct. Know? So always borrow money within your means. Means. Yeah. Now, where does borrowing money uh, is very useful, especially on a business setting? Right. For example, um, let's say I have, uh, let's say I'm expecting a receivables. Yeah, a fifty million peso. Uh, project uh, in let's say three months time correct which again 
in in a perfect world, I hope these companies pay on time. Exactly. But in reality, they fucking don't. Usually, they don't. Yeah. Because, in Philippines, only eight percent of businesses pay oh on time. Oh my god, that's why. And in B two B, that's backed by data. Chatbot. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening to this, please pay up, goddammit. Yeah. Oh, uh, right. you know what? Uh, yeah, that's true. Right. Uh, regardless it's of really bad paying culture. Re- regardless of again, and we talked about this in the, in your episode in the first one. That's right. Regardless of what level, yeah, the bigger it is, the worse it is. Actually, that's true. That's it's true. It's fucking fucked up. That's like, true. Well, it's a bit do- dog eat dog thing. Exactly. Sometimes the, the, the SMEs are even the better ones to actually. They, they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's right. fucked up. So, um, always think that it's just like you're buy- borrowing money from yourself. Yeah. Uh, from your future self. Like a ballet. Diba? Oh, oh diba? Yeah. Ah, okay. I'm gonna make 50 million in three months. Uh, but there's an opportunity now for me to use that money to expand here. Maybe I'll just take part of that future money and use it now. Got it. So you need to have that mindset when you borrow money. Mm. So imagine ins- if, let's say, you use that okay. instead of raising money via equity. Okay. Your average, let's say in a business, kasi if you're uh, an SME, okay. at, a, at 15% annualized, that's already cheap. Diba? Yeah. So imagine in that scenario, diba, you have a, a 50 million peso income in three yeah. months' time, and you need, let's say, to use that money now for a project that you don't want to miss, an opportunity. Right. W- it would be cheaper for you to take an advance on that future income by borrowing money from a bank or from someone else mm-hmm. instead of raising equity. Because diba? again, you get full control over how you want to use exactly that, that thing. But Max, there's this, this, I'm curious because I haven't actually done this ever, uh, do debt. Or if there is, it's just a tito tita debt, which is no nothing, small, small checks. What do you do to justify those big checks because again these are more institutional in, in play, uh, investors yeah. th- that cut these types of checks how do you justify and get those checks written for you it goes back to risk management eh, diba? Okay. Um, again uh, there's a lot of money okay. people are, want to lend ma- money okay. you just need to show uh, how you mitigate those risks so for example uh, the simplest way to do it is to offer collateral Mm-hmm. Right? And there's already institutions and firms that, okay. let's say, if you don't have a property, okay. can use your receivables right? or can use your inventory. That sounds familiar. What yeah, institutions sounds, are those? Sounds, like? sounds familiar. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but but oh, there's... Man. Acudine, yes. That's yeah. what it is. So there's, all, there's already multiple options for companies to actually... Uh, uh, there's so many options that they can choose from okay. depending on the kind of asset or equity you have. Diba? Okay. So, for if you, so it, it, again, it goes back to risk mitigation. Okay. If you can mitigate that with uh, something that you own, like a property or a receivable, then these institutions become more comfortable to give you money. What's the back end to do you need a term sheet as well what, what what do you need to prepare in terms of paperwork or is this really the 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 proof that hey this is my receivables and whatnot and this is my 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 assets and whatnot so it's what? usually you show your business plan okay you show if you're going to use a receivable you show them that receivable uh the receivable okay. documents it's mm-hmm. going to support that mm-hmm. and the loan agreement gotcha which exactly. is technically like a term sheet per se. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Last one. Let's talk about mezzanine or mezzanine. Just kidding. Yep. Mezzanine. Um, again, convertible notes and whatnot. How how do you properly execute this and what are the things you need to prepare? So, usually you use a mezzanine, uh, a mezzanine, uh, a mezzanine structure wherein you like mix things up. Right? Let's say a convertible note. Okay. Let's use con- convertible note as an example. Okay. When you raise money kasi via equity, di ba? you're trying to get a strategic partner. Okay. Um, means na nagkakatalo sa valuation eh. Of course. Valuation, this is like, always the deal breaker majority of the time. Exactly. Like for example, if you're a founder, obviously you want a bigger valuation, mm. but the investors don't see it, see it that way. Okay. Also, di ba? Mm. So, if 
you want to bypass that valuation issue. Got it. Diba? Uh, you can go through like a convertible note structure wherein I, it's like this, eh? like, oh, oh, Mr. Investor, um, okay, we we both believe in the business. Okay. We, You know I can execute. Okay. Why don't we, what if we don't talk about valuation today? Why don't you just give me uh, financing? Right. Uh, let's do a financing structure. Right. I'll borrow money from you to uh, 8% per annum. Okay. And if I fail to pay you back, you get X amount. You get uh, this amount of shares uh, and then at a lower valuation. At a, at a discounted valuation. Yeah. By the time I raise my next big round, which is called a valuation cap, that's right. Per se, yeah, it's okay. either a valuation cap or a dis or a discount or both. Okay, it's a double-edged sword. It can work for you or also not work for you in the end. Because if if it, in the best case, hopefully you raise you enough, raise enough also to pay that. But here's the thing, guys. One thing: don't be a fucking weasel. And like, hey, I'm gonna raise equity to pay my other debt. No, no logical investor would give you money to pay another oh, yeah. debt. That's stupid. You need the only way you can pay that is through revenue. Yeah, because investors, when you raise money from them, they expect you to use their money to grow your business. Yeah, not to like patch another utang with another utang. utang. Correct. Exactly. That's fucked up. And uh, another good way of using. A convertible note is, for example, let's say you just need the money. Usually, this is the case, eh, diba? Okay. You just need the money immediately mm. and you don't really have the time to be choosy with your investor, diba? Right. So, let's say someone is already offering you money. You know, oh, here, take my money. Yeah. Uh, a while ago, I mentioned about choosing strategic investors when you give equity. Right. So, here, this is an... If... It, you just need the money and to to like solve an issue or just get things going. Right. You can offer a convertible note because the money that they give you doesn't automatically convert to shares. Correct. Right. You buy time. You can buy essentially buy time. Let's say you're about to close a strat- big strategic investor in eight months' time. So at least uh, if it happens, then great. You can you have the opportunity to take out this convertible note because it's still alone right. uh, during that period. But let's say you were not able to raise the money, it's also okay because uh, if you're not able to pay back that convertible note, it just converts to shares. Correct. Right. So um, it it works you know, uh, if uh, in situations where you really need the money fast. Absolutely. Okay, unfortunately... We don't have what? time anymore what? on That's this it? playbook. No, on this playbook, we'll, we'll be back for another playbook and we'll talk about another topic. Okay, uh, that, okay. For this playbook, unfortunately, we don't have much time. But Mags, if they wanted to do catch you, how, how do they do and uh, do that? And where do they go? Well, they can just check me in. I'm very active in LinkedIn. Okay. So they can search my name, Magellan Fetolino. Send a DM. To in DM. LinkedIn. All right. And I'll just be hanging around here in your studio. Oh, there you go. And if you do again, want to check out whatever the hell we talked about in Jargon City, uh, check out the Hustle Share uh, show notes at hustleshare.com and check out the community if you want to know who else we're going to do playbooks with there in Hustle go. Share community on Facebook. And again, don't forget to message us in our chat button m.me slash chatbot. Oh, no. Hustle Share powered by chatbot.ph. <laughs> and I'll see you guys in the next playbook. Peace. See ya.